Hello everyone. In this module, we will study stability and frequency compensation. So basically, I am taking reference from chapter 10 of P. Razavi. And this chapter particularly deals with the stability and frequency compensation of linear feedback systems. And we'll study up to the extent necessary to design issues of analog feedback circuits. So first, we will begin with a review of stability criteria that how we can make our circuits stable and then the concept of phase margin. Then we will study about the frequency compensation and introduce various techniques which suited to different OPAM topologies. We will also study about the impact of frequency compensation on the skew rate of two-stage OPAM. So let us see how we can make our system stable. So this is the basics of negative feedback system. So here we have shown this is the input access output. This is the power gate gain and this is the feedback factor which is known as beta. So as we have shown that the closed loop transfer function is given by y upon x of s that is the Laplace constant s equals to hs upon 1 plus beta hs. This we have already seen when you, you have read UPAM or analog integrated circuit that how this closed loop transfer function results. Then if let us take an example that if this beta h which is commonly known as loop gain and at s is equals to at the frequency at s is equals to j omega 1 at frequency of omega 1 is equals to minus 1 okay this term goes to minus 1 then this whole gain will goes to infinity and the circuit can amplify its own noise and until it eventually begins to oscillate at this frequency of omega 1 so this particular condition of oscillation can commonly known as Barkhausen criteria which is given as the magnitude of beta h at s is equals to j omega 1 is equals to 1 whereas the phase angle beta h at s equals to j omega 1 will equals to minus of 180 degree. So we can see these two conditions are known as Barkhausen criteria okay and so we can see that this particular equation this particular equation relate only to the loop gain and it is independent of where the input or output are located whereas this equation 2 it is the this particular equation it is the total phase shift around the loop at omega 1 is equals to minus is equals to minus 180 degree but we can see that the total phase shift around the loop at omega 1 is 360 degree how it is possible because the negative feedback itself introduces 180 degree of phase shift. So we should make sure that the feedback must add in phase to the original noise to allow oscillation to build up. Okay. And by the same token, we also say that the loop gain of unity is also required. Loop gain is this gain, beta h. Okay. So if the loop gain of unity is also required to enable the growth of oscillation amplitude. Okay, so this lecture is about the Barthusen criteria, how our circuit starts to oscillate, how we can stop these oscillations, and what are the criteria, what is the Barthusen criteria which makes this oscillation. Okay, so basically two conditions in this Barthusen criteria are that loop gain is a unity to enable the growth of oscillation and the phase angle and the total phase shift around the loop is 360 degree. 180 degree is the phase angle of loop gain and 180 degree is the phase shift which is introduced by the negative feedback. Okay, so both of these phase shift must add in phase to allow the original noise to have oscillation build up okay so this is all in this lecture in the next lecture we will study about the time domain response of a system versus the position of force thank you